Jake Bruton here for The Build Show. I wanted to show you one of the details that we're doing on the outside of this Spring Valley house that we're working on with Steve Basic. And this is about how these windows are installed, but not the installation method, the choice of where we decided to install them. Yeah, so we have a two by eight frame here with an inch and a half of our sheathing on the outside. So the benefit is of having that thick wall is, is we get to introduce the window because it's a flangeless window anywhere inside that opening, depending on our aesthetic. Now, from performance criteria, they're gonna suggest that somewhere in that middle third is the best place to place that window, right? So that we don't create a microclimate on either side of the window by either having the window too far out in the window well or too far in in the window well and challenging our water management. So we, we set it pretty much in about the middle of the frame there. And that little microclimate can introduce a, an aspect where Maybe we get a little bit of moisture there. Or maybe there's a little more space, dead space behind the curtains that causes yeah, a problem. We're just or not getting that air circulation up across the inside of the glass and from a and such, so. design perspective though, putting that in the middle of the wall means that we get an extension jam on the inside and an extension jam on the outside. We get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So here we're taking a Versatex PVC product. This product's gonna get painted, although you don't have to paint it. We're gonna match the windows. It's pitched on the bottom to manage water so there's a five yep. degree slope cut on it so it sheds yep. it's also pitched on the top with the five degree because that's doing the same thing as this once you realize that water hits both surfaces exactly. and then we're mounting it and and steve was saying we always get caught up in when we're craftsmen we always get caught up in the idea that everything has to be furniture quality instead of remembering it's not that we can let this look bad but no one's going to stand this close to it ever again. Right. No one's going to stare at it. The no same one's going to pick it up when we talk about it. And, and it's funny because when it comes down to water management, what we're really scrutinizing is, are we dealing with a barrier system or a water managed system? And our system here is the totally water managed system. So if we back up a little before we put the trim in, last time I was down here with Jake, we actually hosed down a series of these windows and water tested them. So before we put in our casing and trim package, we're under the belief that our water management control layer is intact and complete. And that everything we do from there is simply makeup. So we don't yeah. have to get into caulking, sealing, and creating a barrier because the barrier is already complete long before we show up with our trim package. Yep, so we actually have, say an eighth of an inch behind this PVC between uh, the PVC and the window and if we shove that tight, the idea that most people would want is we're gonna to have to caulk that. But by leaving that joint there, we're opening it, we're allowing it to dry better, and we're not introducing a caulk joint that then we have to maintain over the years. Yeah, and, and the, the, the most dangerous thing about a caulk joint is understand, you don't ask what am I keeping out? Ask what am I keeping in? Because you're, nobody can do a caulk joint that is gonna keep water out for the life of that caulk joint it is gonna find failure at some point in its life and moisture and water is gonna get behind it. And then how does that dry out? Well, that's the water management aspect, right? When it's okay if things get wet, as long as we dry more than they get yep. wet, life is good. It's when things get wet, stay wet and can't dry. That's when we run into problems. And how do we do that? By creating a barrier system and trapping the water behind the barrier that we think we're keeping water out of. So by creating that eighth inch joint, you know, it, it, it allows a water management. Yeah, we're letting water in, but we're letting water out down here. Yep. And we have a slope sill under there. So what do I care? Yeah. Right? The water goes in, water comes out. It's a fully water managed system that is set for years and years of success. Yep. And same thing, we're not jamming this in there. We're leaving the void all the way around it. So it's drying on the back side as well. It's drying on the back side. Water can get in there. There's a pressure relief here. So water doesn't get siphoned in or sucked in or held in place. It's basically water open, yep. right? If I came in and hose this out, water's just gonna pour out down here and it's gonna go out through our rain screen and attach to the rest of the systems that are part of our water management strategy. Yep. And so a little bit of paying attention to our design, paying attention to the assembly, we're watertight, we're durable, we're gonna last a long time, and we're low maintenance. And we're low maintenance. So, okay, stay tuned for more from the Spring Valley House with Steve Basic as the architect and Aero Building as the builder. Check us out on The Build Show, and don't forget to follow both of us on Instagram. Thanks, Steve. Anytime, buddy.